The, um, the environment that, that's been fostered um, throughout, the, um, throughout the Hadley Public Schools, um, based on the uh, based on this, the student projects um, for uh, for gender equity, um, I would say that that would be another um, great um, great example of just the, the, the environment that, that's fostered through uh, through your leadership in the schools. Just to echo on that too, with the second bullet point in particular, I feel like more than not, we um, have updates regularly at meetings of um, the social justice incentives or gender equity, and we're always hearing something just very positive to what's going on in our society in general, and hearing of her support and active role in all of these initiatives for the student would, would go show that she does exceed in that mm -hmm. area. Um, one other thing that I would like to say is um, I'm having a child at Hadley Elementary. I'm not sure how it works um, up at Hopkins. Um, I know that there's um, like tier, tier support for students at the lower grades. It would be good to see that continue up through the higher grades, um, where, that's, where that kind of stops around third or fourth grade. Um, it would be good to see in the future that those tier, those tier supports grow to other grow. To Exemplary. Yeah, so performance standard two, um, exemplary, proficient, needs improvement, or unsatisfactory. Given the goal rating, I think we're looking at it. Unsatisfactory. Oh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Must be Devin's data. Yes. All right. Exemplary. Thank you for making our job easy for us. <laughs> All right, goal number four. Uh, so this is aligned with standard three, and standard three is uh, family and community engagement. So goal number four is um, leading Hadley and implementing key enhancements to improve family and community engagement. And we have three um, examples here and, and status included. So on this one, I'm, I'm going to speak for myself, just being you know part of the community here as well, not just the school committee, but. And, and hearing from others in the community, um, I have you as, as exceeded on this. And you know, your communication and transparency with the community to me is spot on, um, and it helps in terms of. Uh, I feel like people are informed, and uh, where people know that something is, when you know that something might be uh, brewing or coming up as a topic of discussion, that. We're all informed, which helps us to help support you and support others in knowing, um, you know, what's going on. So, in terms of what can be shared and what the facts are. So, I appreciate that because I've never felt caught off guard or feeling like uh, there were mixed signals or mixed messages. Okay. And, and multiple modalities of, of keeping us informed, just okay. making making sure that we. Do check our that we do check our emails and everything like that. Just, um, just I, I definitely appreciate I definitely appreciate that. I would consider that like above and beyond of just standard of just um, making sure they're notified, like making sure that we actually receive the information. I would say um, would definitely support us. Even. The best is when you text me to tell me to read my email. <laughs> so next time I'm waiting for the voicemail to tell me to read my text. Just <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And then the facts. That's right. <laughs> So I, I just wanted to add, I agree with the exceeded, but I would like to go one step beyond. I know that this really talks about community engagement and two-way communication, mm -hmm. but the one thing that I think really brings it to point is that she's always making herself available for parents for any concern that they need. She takes the word open door policy to a literal. She's always willing to hear, willing to listen, yeah. almost all the time, no matter what time. She's always available. 
And I appreciate that you show up to uh, school events. Yeah. I know that's a, yeah. that's a lot to ask. Yeah. Enjoy it. Yeah. There's some, some periods of time, like, I, there's no place else I'd rather be. Some periods of time, like all of us staring at a computer screen and saying, oh, I'd just rather be in the game right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I mean, I think if we get any feedback from the survey that indicates uh, different modes of communication mm -hmm. or some gap, you know, obviously maybe we can address that. But um, I'm looking forward to seeing and hearing about that area because I think that that's that has seen increased improvements over time. I agree. Okay, well, with that discussion, I, I would recommend a rating of the goal as either exceeded or met. I'm going to exceed it. I would both exceed it. Okay. I would agree. And then on the, that performance standard, so we'll have that as unsatisfactory. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's good. good. Yeah. Well, that's how that math works. <laughs> yeah, we'll put that as an exemplary. New math. Thank you. All right. All right. Okay, goal number five. Um, this is with standard four, and standard four is professional culture. Um, these, this goal, number five in particular, uh, talks about promoting the success of all students by nurturing and sustaining a culture of reflective practice, high expectations, and continued learning, sorry, continuous learning for all staff. And we have um, five examples here, or five strands here. I think my, my initial recommendation on this is um, net. I, I think that these bullets have been met, the NEASC study in particular, um, and what we'll be doing with those outcomes in terms of uh, mm -hmm. what's been addressed and what we'll build out in the future, that there's there's more growth in this area mm -hmm. in terms of these goals, but um, I feel satisfied that they have, that what was laid out here has been met. Mm -hmm. I agree. That makes sense. Yeah. You're welcome. And then, so on standard four, um, overall, with the goal of MET, we can go with exemplary, proficient, needs improvement, or unsatisfactory. I'd say proficient. I, I would agree. I would agree. I would agree. Yeah. Using, yeah. Proficient. Okay, so then the overall summative rating um, of performance across that same exemplary, proficient, needs improvement, or unsatisfactory. We've had three um, standards at exemplary and one at proficient. I, I would move to have us at exemplary, exemplary. overall. Okay. Thank agree. you. Agree. Are you doing the math? No, I'm trying to <laughs> silence it. He's <laughs> <I'm> not kidding. <laughs> yeah, I would agree. Yeah. Exemplary. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Here. I, I'm just satisfied if you're not taking my cue and I change a lot. So <laughs> thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And we're satisfied that you're not running out the door. No, that's very, thank you. Very you gotta nice. find the water, water bottle problem. refill station before we lock you out of the building. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is that a See that? Is that it is, there is one here, but I don't know where it is. Okay. That's, that's, how, how about that? Okay. 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 Let's read that. I'm sorry. 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 Disclosure and keeping myself right size. Thank you for those compliments. And I noticed a typo on that. So that's fantastic. <laughs> Is that right? Oh, yeah. So when you're getting perfect. Oh, yeah. Oh, there's that one. Oh, good. There's two. Okay. It's, it's throughout. It's throughout. It's consistent, actually. <laughs> Consistently misspelled. Well, the spelling was not <laughs> Okay. All right. Prioritize spelling. Yeah. Yes. Okay, moving on. Smart. HEF handbook. Minimal changes this year. So just a few things, what you received was a copy of the entire handbook with track changes. Most of them are pretty straightforward. Birthday parties, I just wanna do something on behalf of uh, a teacher representative from the wellness committee that wanted to really be sure that the school committee understood the reason for this recommendation. So the draft uh, notice you have from the wellness committee to go home to families, that hasn't gone home yet. I believe it's going to be reworded, rewritten. 
Um, because although there's a line about the focus, allowing teachers to focus on learning in the classroom on time on learning, the primary reason for making this decision was out of concern for students. One, that students who might have life-threatening allergies or other things don't have to feel badly about that, but somehow they've created an issue. And also, not all families are in the same economic position to bring things into a classroom, so it can really be something that um, is, is challenging for some people and makes them feel something that's supposed to be joyous and can make people feel bad. If I don't, if I'm not in a position to bring things in. So this is the primary reason we're moving to that school-wide approach. So what is that school-wide approach? I'm sorry. So it will be for a nutritious, um, so that every, on the designated, there will be a designated day every month in which all birthdays will be celebrated, and um, every student in the school will receive a nutritious cookie or a cupcake, meaning that it adheres to standards set forth by USDA and our wellness policies. And then in the month of September, we'll recognize all August and September birthdays. And in June, June and July birthdays. And this is for both schools? Yes. It's more of an issue at the elementary mm -hmm. school. I mean, it, 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 parents are really trying to, and the children are trying to have fun and do a nice thing. And yeah. sometimes they bring in these wonderful sweets, which again, somebody might be allergic, or the next, another child might be thinking, oh, we should do that. But we just can't. So the day of any kind of celebration, Correct. Yeah. 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 Alright, so management of that. And then on page seven, straightforward, party students must be accompanied. Um, the health information section is one that uh, our nurse leader does every single year. So she just pretty much struck everything that was there. And is that for an this is Happy Elementary. Yes, this is Happy Elementary. Hopkins Handbook will be, you'll have that next, in July. Okay. Um, so she updates that annually and tries to streamline the health information. Um, and then the appropriate dress policy on page 27 is essentially an elementary version. The gender equity students at Hopkins assisted, help me with that. It's, it's a HES version. So just the things that didn't apply, like they don't have an advisory board, they, um, you know, it's just some minor changes from HA, uh, but it's essentially the same information. Uh, and the cafeteria um, includes now the before school breakfast program and the frozen treat Fridays. We don't have a special Friday, the what treats are available or available, we just change that. Um, and just a question yeah. about the dress code. Sure. Um, going back to that, because yeah. I know Keith, you and I have looked at mm -hmm. that as part of one of the policies. Mm -hmm. um, this, some of this language looks familiar in terms of mm -hmm. probably similar to Hopkins policy, or maybe it's a district policy. It's Hopkins, it's Hopkins. Hopkins, Hopkins, Hopkins did. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, has anything come up with that code of conduct that would influence language or terminology in this handbook? No, uh, the only thing, um, so there's some references to um, like flip-flops not be allowed in the play structure, so that's an elementary yeah. thing, it's not a Hopkins, um, it's not a Hopkins thing. And really just around the advisory board piece, so right. the transgender and gender non-conforming is exactly the same. The, there isn't an advisory board at the elementary school, but there is a place to, the students do have recourse, or parents, depending on the age of the student, but um, to say, you know, they disagree and the steps are pretty much the same, they just don't go through an advisory board. They bring the matter to the principal um, and it, it, to the superintendent. And then, uh, and then the only other change was classroom holiday slash special event policies. So parties, rather, not just on page 33. It was one minor change. Just said classroom parties, holiday special events. Okay. I don't know what kind right. of parties we were fearful people think we were having. This still party is not sure, but we wanted to be really clear. All right, so this does require um, yes. a vote 
Um, can I just ask of course, yeah. um, one question on that? Um, well, two questions actually. On student arrival, yeah. um, I, I, I feel like I remember seeing somewhere when I was looking through this the first time, and maybe it was just rereading this, and I thought that there was an edit. Um, something that would really stress the issue of drivers not being in that bus loop um, at any time during school hours. Um, if that was, if maybe I didn't, there was, okay. There's just something, because I know that there was the, yeah. Um, so, I just, so I was just hoping that that would be stressed somewhere. Um, the drop off, so you're thinking you saw that it was stressed somewhere and you're I'm, not I'm, finding I'm, it Yeah, I'm like, thinking that, yeah. okay, no, the, yeah, there we go, there's the, the it's, it was bolded. bolded, it was bolded. And okay. I'm maybe? Yep, yeah. on page four. Okay. Um, and yes, yeah, yeah. if I might ma make a suggestion yeah. just to really drive it home to parents, um, that, that new number 10 on page 7, mm -hmm. um, to put a time again in that spot as to when oh. students would be considered tardy. Perfect. <laughs> sure thing. So, I, full disclosure on my part, if I see if it, even if it's if it's like even like a little after eight thirty, if I still see Doctor Wickman out there, I'm like, no, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> Run. Perfect. Okay. Any other questions? With the recommended edit, right. adding the time on. Mm -hmm. yeah. Motion. Motion to approve the recommended edit. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, next, um, when well, we talked about recommended changes to birthday celebrations from yeah, wellness that committee, different. so that's part of yep. that. Uh, is there any other discussion needed on that? Okay, and that doesn't require a separate no. vote. Hopkins, programming and schedule updates. We talked about this a little bit before, so we have um, moved ahead at this point with eliminating the family and consumer science program at Hawkins Academy, and we will be posting for an additional math teacher. We have added electives, so what, what's happened as a result of that is um, we've reallocated, since we still have a level service budget, so we've reallocated that FTE to add a math position. We also added additional electives um, in the blocks where there were electives for middle school or high school, where we did have to absorb students out of family consumer science electives. So we've added additional electives. And what happens with the, with the Hopkins schedule is that adjustments to schedules, I mean, typically what happens is the first two weeks of school, even when students have a set schedule, they're in and out of the office and counseling. The guidance counselor's office trying to make changes or if things aren't working, they're still changing their schedule. And uh, schedules, I believe student schedules will be available, any updates will be available in the student portal in mid-August, just like all notifications about class assignments and teachers, so students and parents can find information there and they'll have a chance to review any adjustments made to a schedule, talk with the guidance counselor and make additional adjustments if needed at the start of the school year. But we did go ahead and reallocate and the information in your, this was not an easy decision, I certainly, I, I wish students could have every single class that they could dream of, and I really, it's nothing to do with the faculty. The faculty member is a wonderful, wonderful human being who's been more than understanding, although personally so disappointed, says not a single faculty member would argue with the need for an additional 1.0 FTE in mathematics. And so if money were no object, we would just add that. But that's just not our current reality. And you can see what I prepared for you is how many faculty members are in each of those departments, and that includes teaching for middle school and high school, and the requirement in math core. So you can see we really, really did have an issue with math um, prior to this. So, and why family consumer science? So we essentially have four elective paths, computer science, music, art, and home economics, family and consumer science. The new accountability framework, so no child left behind, 
has now there's a new accountability framework that we're moving into. We'll get our first accountability rating at the start of next year when I do the MCAS presentation and everything else, and I'll present on our new accountability rating. There are two new criteria. So one is attendance, it's across both schools, it's district wide, elementary, and middle high. But for middle high or high school campuses, the number of advanced courses that are offered, and the Department of Elementary and Secondary Ed decides what constitutes an advanced course. AP absolutely is. Honors, AP, and certain, certain mathematics courses, and calculus, regardless of what designation it is, counts. That, so that was also part of the, where would we go to look for reallocation? And in every one of our elected tracks in computer science and finance, there's an AP option, it's AP economics. There's, and I'm not saying we would necessarily offer that every year, that students want it, but it was just part of the decision making. In music, there's an AP option, in art, there's an AP option. Mm -hmm. I do believe next year our art history elective that we're piloting will actually be AP art history. So. So just to be clear, with this change, we're gonna have one FTE added total not added you're swapping out you're reallocating so at the top though under math we have three faculty it's actually going to be four four faculty, faculty members um, and home ec will that program will no longer be offered so that FTE is being reallocated to math. okay is it going to be actually hiring a new person yes so we do have a reduction in force of the faculty yes. member in that field, right. but a posting for a new position in math. So swapping out that FTE mm -hmm. uh, assignment, essentially. So we aren't taking on more staff, um, but we're essentially reallocating resources based on the demand. Mm -hmm. And that, I met with the faculty member today who's impacted, who's affected by this. So we met today, and I was, helping the person look at what what their educational background is, the kind of professional development that they've done. We talked about a license that I believe is certification that the person is qualified for. So um, I'm also working with the person to see if they can um, pursue a license that might match with an existing demand, whether that's a full-time position or not. Um, so we. We actually have, you'll see when we do personnel report, there are some positions you might say, wow, it looks like there's a lot of positions and I don't know that I've seen all these postings. So you'll see like anticipated vacancies that'll start posting and things that we need. And in some cases, we want to see if, if, for example, this person, one, because they're a great contributor to our educational community, two, we want to do what we can to reduce um, unemployment liabilities on the town side. So if we can move quickly and see if in fact they are qualified to hold a license in an area that we have a need, then by contract, a person who is qualified for a, a unit in of professional teaching status must be considered for open positions for which they're qualified. Mm -hmm. So that would be a win all around. Now, in terms of student opportunity mm -hmm. um, with like open classroom design and mm -hmm. independent studies and stuff, if they're were students that were interested in, in in pursuing some more education along these lines, mm -hmm. would they have an opportunity to do that in some way? Yeah, so we do, we are pretty open to independent studies. We've had a number of those, I think, for, Mr. Beck has spoken with you all about those. Whether it's virtual high school um, or independent study, if a student identifies an interest and they want to pursue that, we work with them around it. These programs, I mean, the department, the only way to get certified now in home ec and family and consumer science is through this thing called portfolio review. They don't do a subject matter test. Many districts have eliminated the program entirely. It's just not that common anymore. But students certainly can pursue it. And I want to be clear, the math, FTE, um, if needed, we're looking at what kind of, whether that's engineering or design or makerspace type of lecture. So it's not just like, oh, we lost an elective and we think you'll take another block of algebra. Happy days. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know that wouldn't go over well. So we're looking to to balance with elective options. And that goes to answer what the second question that I have would be 
if eliminating these like this style of course um, opens us up to additional options of people trying to choice out or choose a different um, choose a different school. Right. So that was part of that analysis about where what appear to be the priorities that people have in terms of content in computer science, engineering, robotics, art, uh, music. Those are things that are, are huge draws. Yeah, and if I recall from, from last month or earlier this month, um, there were only three students enrolled. And in some of those courses, they were like a one and zero enrollment. Yeah, and I think three, three total yeah. in the courses in that In, in, that in the middle ones, yeah. yeah. There were some, some fully enrolled health courses the person was teaching that we had to reallocate to other staff who could teach those. Okay. So does this require no, just keeping you informed. informed. Okay. All right. All right, FY19 budget updates. So, as I said, we have, um, Chris is going to talk a little bit about the school choice applications, but there's school choice funding application, applying those funds. We have, we don't have an Excel spreadsheet or any updates to show you along those lines. The things that we're still waiting on is we have, Definitely now, this reallocated math position, library media specialist from the retirement, and a one-year leave from an English teacher at Hopkins. That those right now, we have cost estimates in the budget. Once those people have been hired, we'll have exact figures. So that's a lot of estimating. And potentially, we have an anticipated vacancy in mathematics. Another teacher who's most likely moving will advertise for an anticipated vacancy in that position and an actual vacancy for the other. So that, that could be a, a lot of movement. And we could end up saving money. We'll see when we have the final numbers, we'll give those to you. And I'm working really hard with other folks to try to finalize the schedule at Hadley Elementary School that ensures children's needs are being met and met well, but that we are not unnecessarily duplicating efforts. Right? Um, and so after we've taken a look at that, we also have some vacancies there that we need to post for in terms of one-to-one -one assistance. So when the final numbers are in closer to September, you will have another update from the FM19 budget. So does that cover the mm -hmm. personnel report? Yep. Okay. Any questions on the personnel report? Long-term stuff. Right. So we'll have a long-term stuff for the one year. Yeah. Because we have a leave. Yeah. And then we'll have a long-term stuff. Got it. Mm -hmm. right. Oh gosh. And then uh, the ABA special education teacher. So we have a couple of again cost estimates, and that will make a big difference. If all of them, if all of the estimates were off by five thousand dollars, which wouldn't be a huge off, and you're just trying to guess what education and staff somebody is going to come in at. So that could fluctuate the final numbers in that particular line that you saw in FY19 by $25,000. But this, so we're, and I know that. The monetary amount for different positions would vary too. We're looking at the 0.29 math teacher that's an elimination then, so we're moving that full-time faculty mm -hmm. to math. Mm -hmm. So there's a potential for reallocation. Uh, I did not know the budget when I needed to balance the last time you saw that. If you recall that narrative, but you know it's already gone. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. So I wish that was in the video. It's not. It's already gone. Although, Got it. again, we could be in better shape depending on what the new hires are thinking about. Now, in terms of the um, classes at Hadley Elementary mm -hmm. next year, um, so you you'd mentioned after seeing where everybody mm -hmm. lays in the classroom, um, I know this year it's, there's a slight change in how the, how those classes are being assigned, as opposed to like the, the teacher and the, with the teacher input and all that kind of stuff. Can you speak a little bit? I about sure that? can. That's probably helpful. So the the piece that 
change. I mean, how somebody experiences this, I, can, I completely respect, because change is always change. Kind of deal with the country, why are we doing this? But what has historically happened, um, and I believe it's been done very, the teachers have been very thorough and they've been very thoughtful, but historically what has happened is teachers got together, so let's say grade two is meeting with grade three, grade three is meeting with grade four, they're up and down, so two meets with three and with one. And they review um, the students who are coming up and the teachers who currently have the students, they have a conversation and then together they make recommendations for class lists. And there's a whole lot of thought that's going on there, but it's not transparent. It's not to the <coughs> explicitness. It's just at the end of the day, here's a list. Here's a recommended list. So something else can be happening too, right? We can have move-ins come in. When teachers are creating those lists, they do take into consideration students who may have an IEP, but they're not necessarily looking at actual service delivery goals. So they're not looking at B grid services, which is supports in the general education side of the knowledge. They're making really good, strong recommendations, but not looking at grids necessarily, have no way of knowing who move-ins might be, have no way of knowing if parents have made a very specific request for a well laid out reason. Parents, it can't just be, there has to be some good, a good compelling reason to consider a particular class assignment. So they don't have that information. And then what happens if we need to make adjustments because we had a move in or a move out, or we notice that students with very similar support needs, let's say in a, in, in a B grid general ed support needs, have been distributed because the, there's been one way of looking at it, but in doing that distribution, we've now created a situation where we have to duplicate resources, which is salary and benefits, so it adds up. So what I requested this year is there were a Google spreadsheet, not everybody saw, it was locked only to the teacher whose class it was, and then to somebody with an educationally legitimate right to know, me, the Pam Haywood. And we asked teachers to put in fall, winter, spring data. And that doesn't mean that's a whole picture, but this allows us that if we, if something happened that even the teachers didn't know about and we need to make some sort of adjustment or movement, we actually have data to look at to say, well, it looks like this student really needs some, you know, some peers to academically stretch with or some peers to group with. And so we're gonna make an adjustment. But having that data allows us to make adjustments that are more informed. There was also a note section where I encourage teachers to write any kind of note that was qualitative in nature. This might be about peer relationships, social and emotional development. And I also told teachers, you can still group kids if you'd like. You can say, if we were doing this the old way, this is group A and this is group B. Or a teacher recommendation. They could put anything they wanted in the notes. So I, I would say teacher input has not diminished at all. The teachers were encouraged to write notes. And the notes would then allow me, because I'm sitting here in the summer and they want to go to the beach and they deserve to go to the beach. So I don't call them up and say, oh, I'm going to move and do this because of, for whatever reason. Again, it could be a move in, it could be a move out, it could be just um, making sure that schedules are effective but also efficient. And we don't have people who can only see it's, the schedules are working for the, for the specialists or the related <coughs> service providers as well. So it was, it was actually a request for additional data. It was different, and I think people reacted to, I didn't mean that negatively, it was different. And so when things are different, it's like, I don't have to do all this. Um, and I'm not saying it's finished being different, right? We had, the, the goal was, when we're making these recommendations and decisions, I explained to teachers, one, I believe that we owe it to parents. If, a, if an individual parent wants to say, I want to understand how you made this recommendation, I want to be able to say, here are all the data that we looked at. And with just a list, I can't do that. I wasn't there, I didn't tape record the conversation. I also have explained that I owe it to the town. I owe it to the town, I owe it to, to the people of this community, and I owe it to the other departments. That when we have what appears to be a duplication of resources, I can look somebody in the eye and say, there was no other way. There was no other way to do this well by children and eliminate or reduce some of the, the expenditures associated with doing it this way. And, and I have to know that. And I couldn't, it's not that I don't trust people, but I couldn't say, 
why well, I, I just had a list, right? It's just there's so many competing demands for a limited amount of resources in the town. That was the why behind it, and that's what it looked like this time. And so in some cases, teachers still make class list recommendations. In some cases, they just had notes. I met with each grade level team on the last day of school for teachers. Um, a lot of people said, you can do whatever. But this particular grade, like, they could be with anybody, they're going to be fine, right? Just, there's two notes, that's all I needed to give you. So that's how it was different. Thank you for that. Sure, thank you for asking. I know there was some questions about that. And one other thing to clear up for people, there's been some discussion about fifth and sixth grade, and maybe looking at that a little bit differently. I'll be emailing the teachers tomorrow. I was trying to give them some options, but to say, I just can't right now make it work. So one of the, the I don't want to say problems we were trying to solve, but the condition we were trying to improve is that it seemed like perhaps there were some behavioral problems that start to pop up in the older elementary grades. I mean, some of it is just developmental. They start to get more independent. But some of it, one, one theory, which was logical, was that, gosh, it's not the same group since so kindergarten. Right, because somebody pointed out it was a mixed meeting between some Hopkins faculty and elementary faculty. And said, we see, yes, maturation happens between grades six and seven. We see a lot less of this at Hopkins. It was really a huge issue. It doesn't go away entirely, but it, it diminishes. And so even an elementary teacher said, well, they move around at Hopkins all the time. So, and then we said, oh, well, this was around the school choice. So one strategy is to shut down school choice in order to keep a lid on these kind of peer relationship issues. But how about another strategy is we try to actually address the condition that might be contributing to the problem. Um, so as much as I tried to make a couple of options work, like having a teacher be a grade level specialist, I teach two subjects in one grade. Right now, if you're in grades five and six, you teach two subjects in two grades. It's called core preps. So grade level specialist, I teach one grade, two subjects. A subject level specialist, I teach one subject, two grades. The challenges I'm running into is that if, if math is taught all through the day, this has this trickle down effect for special education providers, math support interventionists, right? Then that's all they can do is help fifth and sixth grade. That's the, the struggle I'm having. So I, I'm gonna share what I tried encourage the teachers and the new principal to look at it next year with an eye on let's really pay attention to things we notice try to define them as problems to be addressed get clear on the conditions we want to create and it wasn't a waste of time but chances are it's, it's going to look very much like it does right now each teacher teaches two grades two subjects for next year so no big changes on the horizon at this point point. and we probably don't we also need to make sure that parents understand the what the why and the how of something and that you know time keeps getting tighter for that. So that's where we are for this. But we, we are looking to do it possibly in a way that, that addresses some of these issues. And yeah and just looking at taking into account the, the grids on the mm -hmm. students did mm -hmm. with the IEPs and everything like that and trying to make sure that the service providers have enough time to actually service all the people I totally understand and respect that. And if we do that more efficiently, again, it's not about just the bottom line. It's when you do that more efficiently, we also aspire to become effective at being an inclusive district, right? So that doesn't mean if you if, if your least restrictive environment is in a separate classroom, that's what you're going to get. So LRE, least restrictive environment, that stays the same. But inclusion is an aspiration of ours. So when the support providers and the certified special education teachers are able to use their time efficiently, they can actually be in general education classrooms, which is really wonderful for students with significant needs with all kinds of needs. It's another reason that they need to do it as efficiently as possible. Thank you for those explanations. Sure. Okay. Um, anything else on this is part of the FY19 budget updates? Mm -hmm. Okay. School committee retreat. My favorite topic. Oh, but Humera's not her here, and it's her place that we're going to. Did we decide that? She had offered a uh, conference room. Do we want to pick a date and see if there are maybe two dates of yeah. possibilities and see if she can? Sure. So, um, um, what are we thinking, Annie, like month of July or month of August? 
you all can tell me, I can tell you what doesn't, um, when I'm not available. And it's really just, I would say before, um, from, from any time from July 5th to, let's say, August 8th. Because then I'm taking a short vacation after that, and then essentially, then it's open for me. What day of the week are we looking at, and what, like, look, can we think about, like, yeah. how many hours we're looking to spend, because that might shape mm -hmm. how we decide. So, like, in general, like, I've never obviously done one of these. How many hours do we typically spend? Well, have we ever done one of these? Yeah, yeah. They, they did it in the evening, and it was just, um, I'm not going to say it was the afternoon. No. Late afternoon, yeah. through and eat dinner. The one at the end of the farm. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that like five to eight? Or? No, we started at one or two. Yeah, it was more during. Was it? Yeah. And we went till I think seven or eight. So like, right? That, that's what I was wondering. We afternoon and evening. We did have dinner there, didn't we? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Was it good? It was good. I don't know. <laughs> 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 I'm looking at this cheeseburger pizza sign behind you. So. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that's as good scary. as that. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we could do something like that after eight hours. hours. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think we were trying to get seven, seven hours. Mm -hmm. Pretty full day. missing a full day of work. Right. Yeah. Is really the issue. That's going to um, limit me. Yeah. Yeah. Are there, are there better times and days that work for your turn? Um, Well, no, the weekdays are difficult in general for me, especially coming up, unfortunately, we're going to be extremely short-staffed mm -hmm. starting in July. Um, so I'm going to have a hard time getting out of work too early. I get out of work at 3.30. I can probably get out of work at 2.30, mm -hmm. um, depending on the day of the week, and then we could meet if it, where was her place again? She's in Amherst, but that's not, I was just trying to get you all off campus without spending Right, because right, that was a, so if, I mean, if we started someplace at like three, would mm -hmm. that be too late? I could do three, do dinner, yeah, like a working yeah. dinner, and try to wrap up by you know, nine. Mm -hmm. That's totally reasonable. So, if we're trying for the weekday, I can't do July 5th or 6th. Oh, and I just want to get an agenda out to you anyways. I was just giving you a yeah. uh, And then I won't be able to do the week of <laughs> July 16th. What about oh, the week of July 16th? I'm, is that, I, I wouldn't out? be able to do that. What about the week of the 23rd? I could do the end of that week um, the 27th. That's the one day that week that I would have a hard time doing. Okay. So I could make it work if I had to. So the following week I could do the 30th. Can I ask, is anybody, is midweek like crazy? I'm just stating a preference. I have one more ticket home to see my sister and try it, and I just haven't booked it. So I'd say when things are midweek, I know I only go there for the weekend. Right? So wait, what's your preference then? Like midweek, like a Wednesday, or then I know I'm not, I'm not there's no chance. Of the problem is I can't, you can't do the week of, can you do the 18th? I can't do that entire week. Yeah, yeah. Gone. and I can't do the 20th. What about, about the July, July 31? No. I could do that. I can't do all this first. I think I can do July 31 or 30. Yeah, if you want to try to keep it to like a Tuesday, that's, that's fine. I, I can also yeah, I can do 31 or more. If you want to do that Tuesday, that would have been. So 31 works for some people. And then how about picking another, like, what about August 7th? Does that work? 7th works for me. 7th or 8th? The 8th is not. Does eight seven work for other people? Yeah, seven works for me, eight does not. Six? Seven would work for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. So no go there. And we could it won't be the end of the world, but about the twenty first. It's getting just in case there's a problem for the uh, May or July or August. Out of town. Okay. Pre yeah. about the week of August thirteenth, May whatever. Let me think. I am only, I could do the, the 17th. Uh, yeah, I could do the 17th. Yeah, okay, I, that's it. I am out of town 13 through 23. So maybe we can just hold the <laughs> break. <laughs> 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 uh, or uh, Universal, actually, this time. So, um, <laughs>
So we have all of you are available July 31st. I can get see a few mirrors available on July 31st. So let's put it in now, what we're time we were saying? Let's say three to nine. And even if you, for some reason Humera's Place wasn't available, you work in, um, I work in Leeds. In Leeds. So the other thing I can ask too is if CES could give us a room too. I thought about that and then Humera offered. CE, it's Collaborative yeah. for Educational Services yes. in Northampton, yeah. had said we could, so I can ask that as a backup also. 3.30 to 9. 3, I think we said 3 or 3.30? 3, 3 to 9. 3, 3 to 9, sorry. 3 to 9, 7.31, and we're just going to hope and pray that. Humera is available. And I would text her about it. I would text her about it. Even if we stayed, why would we text her? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. MSC has said, don't do that. Is there another day that we wanted to? Well, I think we're running out of options, but let's see. What do we write there? Right? So July 24, 25 was not an option. Um, no, I think, was it? I mean, I think you're correct. 27? No, 27, you can't do key. 27, yep, 27 I can't do. You can't do the week of the 16th right turn? Yeah, I won't be able to do that week. July 12th. Well, we said, what about July 32? I can just say forget that. That note is not an option at all. Is July 30 that Monday? 30 is fine for me. Does that work? Yeah. Okay, so the 30th or 31st? Okay, try either of those. Oh. As is the first, if you want to, for me at least. I think somebody else could not do the first. August 1st? I am tentatively out of town. Oh. We could hold that okay. as an alternative to the right now. Yeah. Okay. And then what I will do is I'll check in with Humera about her availability. I'll uh, figure out the space that, that we'll be in. And uh, this is certainly allowable by open meeting. I will create a an agenda through a Google Doc on your email, on your school email address, mm -hmm. so that you can add to it. And I have some thoughts and ideas about things that might help you think through evaluating present level of performance, determining where you want to be, and I can just suggest those. And um, I will facilitate, take notes, and it does have to be a public meeting. If you have a meeting, you would like to be there, we can. Okay. So we'll post it as a regular meeting. We'll plan to do a working dinner as part of that. Yep. Yeah. Great. Okay. Um, any public comment? Nope. Anyway. All right. <laughs> hey, yeah. Your <laughs> business manager report. You're up. Okay. So we have a few reports today. Uh, the first is the budget summary report. Really not a lot to uh, discuss here. I would recommend just zipping right to the last page and looking at the available funds that we have. A lovely number of minus two hundred thirty-eight thousand dollars. You would have thought I made this report. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take that out of your check. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's actually, uh, believe it or not, I ran this last week. We ran another warrant today, and now it's down to minus one ninety-eight. So. Basically, we went through, um, closed out a lot of purchase orders, items like that, and immediately gained forty thousand dollars. So, uh, which was kind of what I was expecting. That, you know, it really wasn't that much of a surprise. But nevertheless, that's where we stand uh, with the budget. I have still some final transfers to do, uh, moving a little bit more money to grants, some to circuit breaker. And the rest would be somewhere here. I have a post-it note with the amount we need for school choice. There it is. Um, to make up the difference in uh, what you see here, and that is two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. I also handed out a kind of a school choice projection before the meeting. It was not a meeting package, just to show. Um, what using the six hundred thousand dollars total for this year uh, means to the school choice picture? Uh, it's not bad, actually. In fact, it's it's better than what you've seen before. Uh, we're using less this year, and the two hundred fifty that I'm asking for approval on is, is kind of a maximum amount. You know, we might not need every bit of that. If so, I'll use less. Um, 
So can I ask a question? Here? Sure. So the projected applied to FY18, you still have six hundred thousand dollars here. Is that because we've already applied uh, three hundred fifty thousand dollars in the previous vote? We, we did three fifty okay. and, and the two fifty here. That's, yes. I just oh, so it's not two fifty on top of the six hundred. No, no. no. So by applying the two fifty tonight, it will bring you to what you had originally voted. That's good. Okay. Should have okay. started with that. So <laughs> <Sort of> lovely. <laughs> He likes to give me a chance to show off. Uh, That's right. Since I can't get the lunch account balance. But apparently tonight we'll see that Chris got it balance. Okay, so we do need a motion um, to approve the transfer. Right? And I see that's the language that you need. So can I just ask too, though, Chris, so if we're down to 198, you still need the 250 total? We do, uh, yes. Yeah. Um, I, the reason this was not in your meeting package is because I waited until about 4 o'clock this afternoon to wait until we had as many items as possible posted and then just look it up and see where we stand. And it's an up to amount. What it allows us for is if there's any expenses, one, that we get additional uh, expenses rolled into it. Um, and also, yeah, so that's primarily. Uh, if we don't use it all, then it goes back into the school. So right. will we see next month then what the actual was it was used for? Is that uh, you should. Okay. I can't say 100% for sure, but that is certainly the goal. Okay. It all depends on... The timing, probably. Basically, yes. The town mm -hmm. is looking for uh, the final transfers to be done. I think it was July 22nd. So typically you wait till the very end because, you know, there's no prize for finishing early, but there's certainly a... Uh, a problem if you do and then all of a sudden bills come rolling in after so right, right. Um, you kind of wait until the very last minute to do it and mm -hmm. um, so it, it's that's right around where your next meeting is I believe so okay. it'll, it'll be either there or at the next meeting depending on the timing of your meeting and the language is basically to transfer up to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in expenses to the school choice account in that to the school choice account. That's correct. Right. Right. Yes. So I make a motion to uh, transfer up to two hundred fifty thousand dollars of expenses to the school choice account. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Then we have the grants report. Um, most of the grants are used up. That health grant with $258 is now down to about 106, I believe, uh, since we ran it. Circuit Breaker, we still have some transfers to apply to that. You see 100,000. And Circuit Breaker as well, if we don't need to um, you know, apply all the transfers to it, then we won't, we'll carry over more. Um, you know, we won't be carrying over more than what's allowed by the state, so there's no danger of that. Um, but that's another one of those items. I did several purchase orders today to the circuit breaker account some of the special ed tuition uh, bills they're very tough to get by the end of the year Melissa's been calling I've been calling and emailing and they come when they come so what I did was you know and we don't know the exact amounts of them either uh, it's not like they just take the bill and break it up into 10 or 12 months they apply it on the number of days the student attended that month um, in the case of one where we have someone coming into the district, it depends on how many days they spent in the district. So you can't really, um, I guess, accurately just predict what the bill will be. So what I did was I looked back over the past six months, took the highest bill, and put that purchase order in against Circuit Breaker. That way, if the bill comes in lower, then we just, you know, basically we just use less. That, that's all we do. So, um, we took care of a number of those today and uh, you know, we're actually in, in very good shape right now the list of open po's <laughs> which was 20 pages long um two weeks ago is now down to about a third of a page so um, you know we're, we're certainly making progress with that and the goal is to get it down to zero so yeah. hopefully we'll get Whoa, that, that lunch time. Look at that. Oh, that whopping balance with no parentheses around it. Wow. <laughs> you have to shake that. Yeah. 
Um, sadly, that was the result of a transfer of salaries <laughs> to the. I, I have to be honest. I, I can't. Lie. Um, to the to the local budget. Um, so that's how we ended up with a, a balance of positive seventeen hundred. Um, Although, in terms of collection, Chris did point out after input from the school committee last time to make the collections more user friendly on the parent end. Um, Ms. Zach and Chris followed up on that and they discovered that there was actually a glitch in the My School Box. Mm -hmm. So that once that was addressed, what did you tell me in about a day it went? They got they got eight hundred dollars in one day. It was up to five thousand dollars in delinquent accounts. Um, that was five thousand and change um, when Diane emailed me last week, and and she emailed me the next day and said, "Hey, we found an issue with the software." Um, you know, when I re requested that she use the software, where she said we already do it automatically emails, uh, you know, the house when a balance hits a certain negative amount, and. Then when she went and checked on it, she realized that some of those accounts were not actually getting the emails. So they changed the settings on it, and lo and behold, the first day they got $800 in delinquent payments. She was down to $3,800 after three days from the $5,000. So definitely some progress made, and hopefully it will continue. Um, so that's, uh, that's certainly a good thing. And it will also help going forward. You know, it's, it's one of those things that's not going to just help this year, but next year as well. Great. So that's how much we have in school choice right now, mid 79. Uh, that was at the end of May. Yes, yeah, so we'll, we'll be getting another payment of about forty-five, forty-six thousand dollars $46,000 in June, and then of course reducing it by the uh, 250000 And the preschool revolving, I received the check. I, I think I mentioned it last time that there was a check we were waiting for from another district. Uh, that came in. It's not in this report. It was deposited in June, actually, just today. Um, but that was a check for $6,000, and there was another one for 1000 So that's all going to move it up in the other direction along with the June deposits. School account, the student account goes down by 27000 Stuff. Yeah, that's, you know, I mean, you can see how it, it kind of builds and builds and builds, and then everybody does things right. the last couple of months of the year. So I think some of the big field trips have Yeah. Okay. Capital plan? Okay, so. Really requires a so last, last time we talked about, um, it was requested that we do a 10-year view. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yes. Yeah. So we talked Okay. Okay, so we talked about what would be represented on that, what would be those things that are kind of recurring items that would, right. you would expect to come up, um, and just syncing things up with you know, field work and other things. So. And what we will need a vote tonight to accept it, but the conversation remember at our last meeting was this is not finished, we'll discuss it at the retreat. The town has a deadline to come to us to get some feedback to them. Actually, the deadline is Friday. They know that you were meeting tonight. So after it's approved, we'll give it to them tomorrow, or we can email it tonight after it's approved, right, uh, over to David. And that's just for their capital planning committee, town hall, to just have a general sense of some of the projects we think are on the horizon. It does not prevent us from updating it, you from updating it, and then we will provide updated information to the town. Did you all discuss the health and security upgrades? Um, Fire. Yeah, I hesitate to really discuss oh, the security yep. upgrades. We so discussed them in executive session, but also the health was the water bottles. Yes, the water, um, the that was water additional water bottles. They're here somewhere. They do exist. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's basically to yeah to replace the existing ones. Yeah. Face Apparently, to have some kind of lighting um, with a sign. So Anne. Yes, <laughs> 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 a big lit arrow. You can break a superintendent of water. And the cafeteria equipment um, that is for Hopkins. New serving lines with drains. Um, it's one of those things where they they have these basically serving lines that hold hot water, and you put 
um, the metal trays of food. They kind of rest over the hot water and it keeps the food hot. Um, but to drain them, they take towels and stick it in, wring it out, stick it in, wring it out. I mean, it's, it's kind of a crazy procedure, obviously, and they've been doing that for the past you know, 20 or 30 years. Um, so that, and, and they, they said with the drains, you know, they will obviously be cleaner because the, you know, the water will get out of there um, a lot better. Uh, the other item is the walk-in cooler. I may have mentioned this last time that the cooler that they have back there now, uh, the floor is rusting and um, it, it's in pretty bad shape at this point. Um, and then they had um, a refrigerator and freezer that were both giving them hard times as well. Uh, and fan repairs over the, um, I don't even know what you call it, but the big thing in the middle. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you sound shockingly like me. Please continue. <laughs> <laughs> and and there's a big fan, an exhaust fan. And, is that the uh, Univent replacement? Um, the no. Univent replacement is is somewhere in the here. Univent replacement are the ones in Hawkins has the older ones that are up in the middle. Yep. Oh, the uh, I mean, yeah. Yeah, this is an exhaust fan, and the motor is having problems with it. So um, that's to repair the motor. So those three things are included in the equipment mm -hmm. in the in the cafeteria equipment. Yes. Now, is there any way to um, retrofit any form of drain system into that bay marine? The um, water thing that holds the things. Um, that, that's in front of the big thing. That's in the middle. Big thing, yeah. <laughs> Full of the fan. <laughs> um, yeah, I just I don't know the terminology. I, Diane Zach saw this, so I, I never used it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me do what. That language exactly, please. <laughs> Who committee would like to know? Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure how much that would knock us down. I was just curious. Yeah, I'm used to the restaurant sure. industry. I'm used to owners trying to find the cheapest ways. Yeah. Do um, I don't I don't know how they would do it, but I can certainly ask. Them. It's it's not a problem. We did make one huge. Um, benefit and what they would do is they would take that off and, and attach it to the new one and that is they had these wooden shelves mm -hmm. that um, were on the kitchen side and so every time they either you know lifted the food over the shelf didn't fold um, so there were a couple of things number one it was made of wood not the you know the cleanest surface and number two um, it didn't fold down so they they literally had to reach over you know which I would imagine after a while when it, a big container full of food it's pretty hard on the back so um, we did replace that this year with something that folds down made of stainless um, and we did check and make sure that if the unit was replaced that shelf could be just taken off and applied to the new one as well um, but I will look into that and, and ask her if that can be done. Looks good to me. I'd like to see the girls locker room in there again. Yeah that's one of those items that I actually bumped up we had $400,000 with an estimate from 2009. Again, I just thought yeah. we should put something other than a 10-year-old estimate. Mm -hmm. So I added $100,000 to it. it. It may or may not be enough, but at least it's certainly more in the ballpark than it was. And the air conditioners will be completed this summer? They are there right now. Um, the workers? Not yep. the workers. Excellent. Right, not the air conditioners. <laughs> <laughs> well, Although they, may be, they may be sitting on pallets there, I don't know. But yeah. Yeah, the workers started today, actually. Well, motion to accept. Sorry. Yeah, I was just going to say, I think this is the best, uh, you know, first pastor we're going to get for now. Mm -hmm. And we were going to talk at the retreat a little bit about just future priorities and you know, strategically around this. But, yeah. So, a motion to accept the 10 year capital budget timeline for Hadley Schools. Second. Seconded. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 And that was all I had. Okay, great. I will send this to David right now. Thank you. It's hard to the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Secret. School committee reports. Family and community engagement survey. So I make the joke of how are you able to get the internet? Because I've been diligently trying to um, access the back end of SurveyMonkey and I had it for like 10 seconds. Well, yes, um, last night it was like right around 100%. Yeah, so um, thank you for sending out that other email. Um, we are up to 121 responses. 
um, from the quick glance that I was able to take before my internet went away. Um, it looks like 74 responses on the uh, um, Hadley Elementary side and 47, or 70, yeah, 74 Hadley Elementary, 47 non Hopkins. Um, so it would be great to try to figure out a way to get some more engagement from Hopkins families as well as Hadley Elementary families. Um, and I will also put out another another blast on Facebook um, just to encourage people with another encouragement. I'll do that um, I'll, I'll do that either this evening or tomorrow evening, probably tomorrow evening. Um, and with the, with the initials, it was with the initial launch, it was I believe 18 or 83 responses via um, the link that was sent out in the emails and 14 that were sent, 15 that were that went through the Facebook. Went through Facebook. Um, so we're just hoping to get as much response as possible. Um, and then I was looking just to try to get some preliminary results to share with you all, but unfortunately I was unable to access that here and I did not have the chance to uh, grab, it this, grab it this morning. So I do have amounts, but I won't have any actual results until we put it in the It's okay. I think you, you could send those out in the interim, right, as long as we don't yeah, and we react to also, it. Sure, That's and then we can share them at the next school committee meeting yeah. and talk about and use them to inform decisions to make around at the retreat. And I would say it looks roughly, I should know how many individual families we have here. I don't know off the top of my head, but I'm guessing the response rate right now is hovering right around 25%, which is great. For I mean, I know we want right. everybody to, and we're encouraging people, but I think we feel comfortable gleaning information from the 25% response rate. That's yeah. very and seventy-four percent of the people that access that access the link finished to uh, complete the survey, so that's also okay. that's also a uh, good great. indicator there. So we're going to keep it open through the end of this week, and then I will I will um, download the uh, results and share them around school committee. Perfect. After Friday, so this weekend. Perfect. All right. Great. Thank you for that. Thank you. 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 A, B, C, D, E, and F, right? With what we have, with the selected chart that you've got in your um, schedule here. Keith and I have gone through those. Uh, you had seen a first read back in March. Mm -hmm. And we just wanted to give folks a chance to ask any questions they might have about changes. Um, the chart really does highlight why the revision was made, and a lot of it was um, you know, bringing them up to date with current legal language or current practice um, with MASC, um, Massachusetts Association of School Committees language, or um, in some cases health language um, in some of the policies and best practices. And where it says see track changes, just remember you were sent all the track changes in a separate email yeah, back in a March, couple of few weeks ago. Any questions? Or? No questions. Okay, so we do have to vote yep. on this one um, and get a motion to really adopt, right, the um, mm -hmm. revised policies as outlined in the policy review schedule. Motion to accept the revised policies for the policy review schedule. Seconded. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 So next we have um, finance and tri board. I have no updates since we last met. They met when we last met. Yeah. Okay. Fields. I was curious about the conversation we had last meeting. Yeah. So as it turns out, let's see if I do justice to this. As it turns out, um, Berkshire Design is not was not even in a position to go to the conservation committee this last meeting. Uh, Chris can talk about what they have some additional analysis that they need to do as far as the backhoe and some wetlands analysis. You can speak more to that. Sure, yes. Um, they told me, I just emailed them this morning to remind them that if they wanted to make the July 10th meeting, they had to have the items in by tomorrow. Uh, and they got back to me later in the morning and said they thought they'd have everything finished by now, but they are not finished. Uh, what they need to do now because of the way some of the uh, wetlands testing went they need to get a backhoe here and 
essentially do like a perk test um, in various spots around the field. Uh, so they asked if the town had a backhoe we could use. I spoke with Jeff Mish today and asked him to see if he could coordinate the town having somebody with a backhoe come and dig the holes. If they can't do it, then of course we'll have to hire somebody to do it. Um, but that really puts us behind, quite honestly, for this year because at the very best at this point in time, we may be able to make the August meeting for the Conservation Commission, possibly not because depending on how soon they can dig these holes and run the tests, and that's you know to be coordinated between the town and Berkshire Design, or just for Berkshire Design to hire it out. Um, then they have to go back and revise the plans, you know, however the, uh, the tests come out. And I don't know that they would necessarily have that ready. Um, he said they needed a month in advance um, if they're going to get a permit. That would mean they pretty much have to have it by July 15th. And I don't know that they'll necessarily have that completed by then, which means they wouldn't really have the plans done until you know enough time to get it in for around August 15th for the September meeting. And at that point in time, you know, it's September. We go out to bid, that's going to take a month. Now it's October before we even get to So, um, I think it's helpful just to remind people of the timeline too, because they may get lost in it. That so last October, CPA very generously sent us that money and awarded that money. But what needed to happen is some people might say, Well, you got the money, why don't you build this? So then what you have to do and what we did was we did a request for qualifications or a request for proposal. I'm not sure if it was a Q or a P, but we needed somebody to actually put together the designs that would then create the bid specifications. So we awarded that. We got our money in October. We put that RFP together. We put it out. We selected and awarded in January. Berkshire Design got that award. Berkshire Design has been working on the designs. But Creating the designs, as you can see, is a pretty involved process. It involves testing soil and, and doing going to conservation committee. And when those are finished, so that is Berkshire's work, and when those are finished, then that's what creates the bid specifications. We advertise the bid, that's what Chris said about a month, we've got to advertise it, and then we'll award the bid, and then we move. But those I mean, are our too, just to add on that, right? CPA. For CPA stipulations, we can't spend any CPA dollars until we raise a big amount. I, I want to make sure, and you could be, because I know you're also speaking with CPA, I, I want to be sure that um, we're just very clear on what those stipulations are. Because my memory was that we had to spend some money. I didn't know that it had to be some sort of match for money or something else, but I, I'd like clarity on that. Maybe you have it too, that we're, that we're just really clear. What that is my understanding. It's, you know, maybe it's worth, given that we have a sense of where we are in the timeline, getting on their next agenda uh, and going to briefing them. My sense is they wanted us to have the full amount in the pocket for this phase because what they don't want us to do is, is go and spend all of their money, all of the town's money that CPA had said it was okay for us to, to use and that the town had voted to for us to use. Uh, but have that money be insufficient have to go back and ask for further funds. Okay. And I know, so we're, you know, we're estimating we're 70 to 80 to $100,000 uh, in need of further uh, fundraising. So that's something we've continued to do. Mm -hmm. Did you already send that email to David? With the capital plan? Yeah. No, that's okay. I was going to say before I forget. Yeah, can I can yeah. send another one. Just the CPA. I just want to. Annie, Annie has to the CPA agenda. She'll call sure. me. Sure. <laughs> Don't forget that. Another time was tight. I appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. I believe that is what I got from Annie. Okay. And if the town does not have a backhoe that we can use for that brick test, does that increase, uh, increase anything with uh, Berkshire design? It does, yes. Yeah. I'm hoping, as I said to Jeff, use your charm, Jeff. <laughs> he has I just went through it. So, yeah, we're hoping that he can, you know. I don't know how long it would take, quite honestly. I, I have no idea. Um, I can reach out to Berkshire and just ask, are we talking an hour of just basically digging some holes around the field, or are we talking several hours? You know, because I think the, the highway department would probably like to know that as well. So, um, I will ask him that. 
Well, Taylor Rental did did advertise around Father's Day, like yeah. your father a big toy. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. And I've got a shovel. Yeah. <laughs> you are committed. Just, I am. Oh, Mr. Pfeiffer. Just get this done. Well, he, he, didn't, he, he didn't offer to, shut, to dig any holes. No, he didn't offer to shut up. Yeah, the scary thing is, he said in the email, it says we will need to do some test pits. So I can't imagine that's just a couple of shovels full. It sounds, it sounds much larger. So. The pit does not sound small. No. no. All right, anything else on the fields? Okay. Um, is there anything on fundraising that you want to bring up other than we need? No, we, we're, we've, got, no we've got plans. Um, we're still working on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, CES, I don't, yeah, if you are not here, we'll pass over that mm -hmm. item. Okay, action items. So we just have some approvals to do. Mm -hmm. uh, approval of EP warrants submitted in May. Is there a motion for that? Motion to approve the AP warrants submitted in May 2018. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I will abstain. Okay, approval of warrants submitted in So you picked three dates, potentially, preferably 7.31, so possibly moving school committee to 7.30. Yeah, would that work in school committee 7.30 and then 8.31 or yeah, that's a tough week? But yeah, it's hard for me to do back to back for that, but I'm sure we're going to Or I have a short school committee meeting. Oh, I can do that for you. That would be good. Okay, so we'll, we'll put the uh, July 30th. Assuming the 31st might work for the retreat or the first first day. All right, is there a motion to adjourn the meeting? Motion to adjourn. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you.